Okay, does L'Hopital have a place here? No, he does not. Because this buddy boy, the numerator is going to 1. Denominator is going to 0 plus. So that's not of the correct form. It's not a limit to which L'Hopital this rule applies, but it's that's a good thing, right? Okay, L'Hopital applies to strange limits, and this is not a strange limit. It's clearly infinity. Okay, and L'Hopital applies to the part A. Hopefully that was straightforward. Um, what do you get? Infinity. Okay, next example. I was not copy this. Nothing really new going on here. I'm just doing a more complicated example. <clears throat> okay, you'll notice I have to have knowledge about a bunch of functions, right? I have to know that ln of 1 is 0. Okay, so we're testing little skills here. And you have to know that cosine of 0 is 1. Anyway, so I do have 0 over 0. Do my L'Hopital. Okay, I have a chain rule. When I do this derivative. Always take a step to simplify. Okay, if you have a kind of a fraction inside a fraction, that is, that's not good. You want to simplify. Otherwise, you have a big mess. So I take a step to simplify, and then I notice that I have 0 over 0 still. And I apply L'Hopital again. It gets a bit messy in the bottom. I need a product rule. But in the end, I'm happy because the limit is no longer strange. It's just 2 over 1, which is 2. Okay, here's an exercise for you to try. I think you'll need L'Hopital's rule know, two or three times. Okay, so you can do L'Hopital's rule. Yeah, you can do it as many times as you want. Um, if you find that your limit is getting worse, then you should probably stop. But there is no, there's nothing illegal about using L'Hopital repeatedly, as long as you're using it correctly at each step. Okay, if we have infinity minus infinity, as we do in this example, well, that is also an indeterminate form because this infinity is pulling me towards plus infinity, whereas this infinity over here is pulling me towards minus infinity. So that is a tug of war again. And I, just by looking at it, it's not always clear who's going to win <clears throat> or if anyone wins. <clears throat> Okay, so what I need to do is try to use L'Hopital's rule. Uh, so I need a fraction. Okay, so I'm going to do a common denominator to make a fraction. And what do you know? The resulting limit is of the form 0 over 0. Oh boy, let me just put all this on the screen. You can pause and copy. So as you can see, it's a bit of a mess, but Really nothing too strange here. I do my product rule. I do f g prime is f prime g plus f g prime. You know, it doesn't matter. You can rearrange these terms if you want. I do it this way. Well, at least today I do. And what else is happening here? Not much. Arctane. 
derivative of arctan is appearing. And I'm trying to simplify as much as I can before making this evaluation here. Okay, at some point uh, I plug in x equals zero and I see that I have zero over zero. So I apply loop tail again. And thankfully that does the trick. <clears throat> Okay, a couple exercises for you to try. I'll give you a hint for part B. So pause and copy and try that. <clears throat> pause, copy, try, pause, copy, try, pause, copy, try. Okay, now we have something quite bizarre. We have indeterminate mm, what you, exponents, exponentials. I'm not sure. Anyways, this is an indeterminate form. Zero to the power of zero. Why is that? Again, it's the tug of war idea. Hmm. You know, if you have two to the zero, that's one, right? So this exponent zero is pulling me towards one. Okay, but the base, the zero in the base, is pulling me towards zero. So I am, there's a tug of war. Again, this is pulling me towards one. This is pulling me towards zero. So who wins? Well, let's find out. Now, what we're gonna do here is remember, if you will, in Cal 1, when you were asked to do a derivative of something like this, what did you do? Well, you used logarithmic differentiation, right? So we're going to do something similar here. So this is going to be similar to logarithmic differentiation. So I'm going to start by saying, let y equal this function here. And I'll apply an ln to both sides. So I'll pause and copy that. Now I'm going to find this limit instead. Okay, what I really want, maybe I'll write it here. It will, it'll, it'll will, it'll will, it will help me find the limit of y. Okay, the limit of y is what I want, right? I want the limit, this is y. So I'm gonna show you later, This finding this limit will help me find what I want. Okay, let's talk more rock. Now, pause copy. So here's ln y, what is ln y? Well, I use my rule of logarithms, which allows me to descend this x. And the point is, is that now I have something I can turn into a fraction. And I can use L'Hopital's rule now. Okay, so I'm not done yet. Pause and copy if you want. Um, I found the limit of ln y. Okay, but that's not, that is not what I want. I want the limit of y itself. So I do a rather lengthy calculation here. So this zero here, so pause and copy, sorry. This zero here 
tells me that the limit of ln y is zero. And so limit of x ln x is zero. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of work backwards. Okay, earlier on I applied ln. Now I'm gonna go backwards. I'm going to kind of erase the ln by doing this e, this exponential exponentiation step. And that'll bring me back to what I want. You'll actually find the limit that I was originally looking for. Okay, that's a bit long. You don't have to do that every time. But in red, I tell you the important thing. Okay, basically, once you find your number here, you just take it and put it as an exponent on E. And that will be your final answer. Okay, let's try a more complicated one. Let's say in the next video.